Hello everyone. Well, I've digged out my retro shirt from the bottom of the laundry basket to open another 1980s vacuum cleaner. Another iconic 1980s. Well, I think it's iconic for the 80s. Certainly amongst Hoover enthusiasts. And I use the word Hoover as in the brand Hoover, not vacuum cleaner. Now then, I'm expecting this to be smashed to smithereens. We'll see how well it's been packed. Normally these don't fare too well. I didn't even bother asking the seller to pack it well. I just, I thought I'll take my chances, see what happens, see if I go on YouTube moaning and complaining about a broken vacuum. And I've every right to moan and complain if I receive something that's broken, as you have every right. It's normally the wheels that suffer. The first wheel that I can feel is okay. Seems to be fairly well packed. We'll have a look at what's in that box in a minute. This is from the first generation. It's quite scratched up, but doesn't doesn't seem too bad. What a lot of mess. The handle has been well. It looks a lot. Oh, is there a screw missing? Oh no, it's there. It looks a lot more brown than I remember. This is a very dark burgundy colour. Should be anyway. So this was probably the best selling of the turbo powers when they first came out. The middle range and this is one that featured heavily in the TV commercial at the time and in all the brochures and on the front of the turbo power brochure this machine is what Hoover decided to feature. Of course there was the turbo power junior which I do have U1100 and the model above this was the turbo power autoflex in a royal blue which I also owned in fact that was the second vacuum I purchased brand new probably in 83 could be 84 I think it's probably 83 I got it so so far so good it's dirty but it doesn't seem in too bad a condition right I'll pop the handle on I'll give it a quick wipe over we'll have a closer look at this machine and then we'll plug it in for the first time now I did buy if you remember not sure whether you've seen it yet, but I bought an Electrolux 350E from this seller, which I had to turn off pretty sharpish because it smelt like it was going to catch fire. And at the time I'm making this video, I am considering putting that outside, turning it on at a safe distance and seeing what happens. See if it does catch fire, because if it does, I'll film it. I subsequently have bought another 350E, so I'm going to use some of the parts from the one that I think is beyond help so it won't go to waste. Okay then, I'm just going to pop the handle on and then uh, we'll have a closer look at this Hoover Turbo Power Upright Vacuum. Okay, before we have a closer look at the Turbo Power, it has been cleaned a bit and polished, so uh, it does look a lot better, but unfortunately, during my cleaning and polishing, I've noticed a problem. But anyway, we'll look at that problem in a minute first of all we'll see what's in this box obviously it's the original box that they would have supplied with the optional cleaning tools for this machine later models they didn't bother with a nice color packaging they just went with a plain brown box or at least a, a plain box with uh, just a, a drawing on the top of the tools inside so inside this one we've got a sealed packet of genuine bags in the traditional yellow colour. Not sure when they changed to yellow bags and then they went to the unbleached paper ones in the 90s at some point. This is a uh, bag code H4 fits all the turbo powers, turbo masters, turbo light and one of the soft bag Hoover Juniors, the U1412, which I do believe I've got somewhere. Now this looks Hmm, this looks unused actually, not surprised. Weren't very good with cleaning tools. That's certainly, that's certainly brand spanking new, the pan converter. 
So, just a bit dusty, but looks like we've got a brand new and unused hose, which obviously fits onto the pan converter just by twisting. These are 10 a penny on eBay. If you want tools for turbo power, type them into eBay and, you, well, eBay UK, and you'll find some and you'll find quite a few completely unused ones. So very easy to get hold of. It's worth having a set if you collect vacuums and you've got a turbo power. It's worth adding for the completeness of it. Brand new and unused all purpose nozzle. Again, brand new and unused extension wand. You just get one with this. Brand new and unused dusting brush. That's of the newer style. Not sure if this ever came. I think they did. The very first cleaning tools did come with this style. Now, the very first set of cleaning tools were a dark brown color, as I recall, because I had some brand new crevice tool. And again, I think the very first sets would have been a longer tool than that. That's sort of a medium length. It's not the full length tool. And the tools, they fit on to the underside of the machine. What you have to do is tilt the cleaner back, locate the pan converter at the front, and then push it until it clicks. That's clicked. So now we've converted the massive suction power of the turbo power for above floor cleaning. And even though this is a stretch hose, I don't think there's any way this reaches up the top of the stairs. Very awkward for stair cleaning. One of these, awkward for car cleaning. But back in the 80s, you did see people cleaning their cars with upright vacuums, with pan converters. It was a pretty common sight and sound walking about in the 1980s. Stair cleaning is possible with this. You can go halfway up the stairs and then you'd have to balance the machine and try and use it. A lot of people, I think in the 80s anyway, would have had more than one vacuum. They would have at least had a little handheld mains powered vacuum, like a dust set or something as well for the stairs and car. That was often the case uh, in houses I went to. So there we go, that's a brand new unused toolkit. Okay, let's have a look at, uh, look at the turbo power itself and uh, we'll point out the little problem it's got. I've cleaned the external parts of this machine just very quickly. I've given it a wet wipe and then polished it with some car polish just so it's a bit nicer for me to handle. But I've not even looked underneath and I've barely looked inside the bag housing. I have a feeling this has been kept in a shed. I can see signs of rust. It's very rigid as well, the handle. Well, actually, more signs of rust, but it's not too bad under here. Well, the underside doesn't look too bad at all. Far better than I was expecting, although there is signs that uh, spiders have made their home in this cleaner. And I can see some rust on the axle of the front wheels. I should be able to get most of that rust off or use as a Brillo pad, bit of metal polish afterwards. There's also rust on the rear wheel axles and that's where we have a problem and I'll show you what that problem is in a minute but I might have some spare wheels or a wheel. This is also a dark brown. This is an early model I think. We'll soon find out the age of it when I look at the rating plate. So you've got four screws to undo and this nozzle plate comes off. I don't. The nozzle plate is in ex very good condition. I'm thinking is it a replacement? It definitely would have been brown though. As I said, I've had these machines from brand new. I remember the underside nozzle plates on the early cleaners being a dark brown. The activator could be original, I'm not sure, but it's in very good condition. Whether it's been replaced or, I don't know, it just seems very good. I'm not sure, it probably will need a new belt, but this isn't bad at all. This cleaner will be from 8384, I expect. We'll find out in a minute. Now, this is what's wrong, unfortunately. The only thing I've discovered so far that's wrong with this turbo power. We can see here what's wrong with this machine. The wheel is broken, one of the wheels, not shattered to bits. 
it's still usable but you can see there's a bit of a chunk taken out of that wheel there now I'll have to check the box closely to see if that part is in the box and this happened during transit it might have happened earlier I'm not sure but if that's the only thing that's wrong with this machine I think we've got off lightly the wheels always seem to suffer in transit with a lot of these machines turbo powers and turbo masters so if you're buying one and having it shipped ask the seller if they could protect the wheels uh, as I said I didn't think to these are still more solid than later versions obviously Hoover started to cheapen the cleaners as they went along to make them cheaper to produce and probably quicker to assemble on the production line the good thing about being quite a dark color it's a very dark burgundy I could replace this with a black wheel if I can find one because the glamour cap on the outside just pop does pop out quite easily so I don't think I'm too concerned I could always find a scrap turbo power at some point that's got perfect wheels and swap them over but so far that's the only thing wrong with this turbo power Another part that's frequently broken on turbo powers is the lower cord hook here. It broke on earlier Hoover cleaners as well, such as the High Power Compact, Junior Deluxe and Starlight. And they've continued the tradition of the weak point on this lower cord hook by making it break on turbo powers and turbo masters. But this one is intact. Now I have wrapped around the cable, so I'll take it off. It was actually shipped in that position so that's why it survived had the seller sent it with the cord wrapped around it might not have survived the trip but that's okay looking at the cord again this is original I don't know if it picks up on camera but this is dark brown it's not black quite an unusual plug on this one I mean it looks like an MK plug I don't know if we can see I can show it to you it says PO there so is this property of the post office perhaps it is an MK plug though but it's branded PO I wonder what that stands for do you know folks if any of you know what PO stands for is it for the post office or is it for something else but it's a bit different but I'll keep that because it's uh, I expect it's age appropriate I'm not sure all the pins are a little bit wonky actually yeah I don't know if it picks up hmm only very slightly out it should be okay further up the cleaner on the top of the bag housing we've got the top storage hook which obviously rotates so you can release all the cord in one go and on the top of the bag housing we've got this blanking plate which would have been replaced by a button on the autoflex version and here at the top of the handle we've got the single speed on off switch Onto the front of the cleaner now, we've got the Hoover branding on the bag door latch and underneath, of course, turbo power written in a very attractive 80s font. So to gain access to the bag, we press down on the latch and the bag door opens. So it looks like the seller has fitted a clean bag, which is nice. Yes, a brand new bag and it's got the original bag slide on the bottom not too dirty either inside here you've got your bag support tube and at the front and I believe this was the first Hoover cleaner to incorporate it although it isn't actually I believe there was a very ancient Hoover upright that had an air freshening feature not sure if we got it in this country but this is the first sort of one that I know of that used the Hoover air freshener and the air freshener fits in here I don't know if it'll have one in I do have quite a few spare ones very lucky to have those because they are quite hard to get hold of ah this does have the original it's probably the original I'm pretty sure this is the fragrance that was supplied as standard I think this is the uh, orchard blossom I think the green one I'm gonna give it a sniff uh, oh it's still got a faint smell can you believe that after all these years that is probably the original I don't know how many people would have bothered replacing them I did back in the day but a regular consumer I'm not sure they would have bothered but that fits in there it was available at the time in four different fragrances orchard blossom summer meadow spring bouquet and tobacco clear well that could be the that could be is that the hmm 
That might not be Orchard Blossom. I think it is. Tell, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure. That could be Spring Bouquet. Anyway, it's hard to tell. It's, I can't s smell if it smells of apples or flowers. But anyway, so that fits on there. So that's the back side of the adjustable air freshener. I'll show you the front of that in a minute. Pop the bag back. It just fits on. It's a push fit. You just locate the collar at the top of the fill tube until it's in position and then close the bag door. So here's the air freshener control which is laughably adjustable because it makes no difference whatsoever to the fragrance emitting from this machine whether you've got it on maximum or minimum or whatever position. I don't know why Hoover decided to put an adjustment feature but it's another benefit isn't it? It's something else they can put in a brochure and say it's got an adjustable air freshener. Personally because I like things symmetrical I always used to put it about dead centre like that. Hoover still had royal approval back in the 80s as we can see by the warrant on the back door here. By appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, manufacturers of vacuum cleaners and laundry equipment, Hoover PLC, Greenford, Middlesex. And of course, we've got the Turbo Power logo again repeated on the bottom of the back door. You can see from the bellows here that I've given them a bit of a wipe, but not the thorough wipe that they need. While I've got the machine reclined, we can have a look at the rating sticker. Okay, so it's Hoover model U2194, serial number U2194, 4120088, 240 volts, 50 hertz, made in UK by Hoover PLC, and it has a 410 watt motor. To finish off the tour of this vacuum cleaner, we have the cleaner head itself, of course, with a headlight. I'll be very surprised if the bulb works in this, but you never know. Miracles can happen. Underneath the headlight we've got the four position height control from low pile carpet, very low pile including stuck down carpet and carpet tiles, normal pile carpet, medium pile and long pile carpeting. Well folks, it's that time again for the big switch on. Will it blow up or will it perform as it should? Now I've had a few concerned viewers suggesting that I should do this outside. Well, thank you for your concern, but I don't really want my neighbours knowing what I get up to within these four walls. That's the secret between me and my YouTube viewers. But I have been seriously considering getting a fire extinguisher, just one that's suitable for electrical fires, but uh, I haven't got round to getting one of those yet. But that is on the wish list. Okay, I've turned the machine on. Yes, it's on at the handle. Okay, so let's see if this Hoover Turbo Power sounds like a Hoover Turbo Power. <laughs> Well, no folks, that doesn't sound like a Hoover Turbo Power to me. Well, not a Turbo Power that sounds okay. I'm going to uh, obviously try it again. Now I do have a spare Turbo Power motor, a new one. So if worse comes to worst, I could fit a new motor to this. Oh, has it got a smell about it? I'm not sure. It might sound different when I'm moving it about. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Well, it's not too bad, but it's not great either. I suspect a lot of you are shouting dry bearings at the screen but uh, I'll have a look at it I'll take the motor apart as much of it that I can take apart and see if I can make this sound a little bit better if worse comes to worst I do have a spare brand new turbo power motor that I can fit to this machine but I'll try and lube up 
the fitted motor to start with. I don't really want to use a brand new motor if I can avoid it. But all in all, it's not bad. At least it doesn't smell of burning. I don't think it's going to catch fire, not yet anyway. And after a brief cleanup, a very brief cleanup, it did come up very well. This is just, just did this in 10 minutes. So it's quite surprising what you can achieve in 10 minutes with a wet wipe and some car polish. If the seller had done this before listing it, he might have got a little bit more. I can't remember if you ask how much I paid for this. It wasn't a huge amount. People, I think, if you're a collector of vacuum cleaners and you live in the UK, I expect you've got a turbo power by now. And if you haven't got one, you probably don't want one. This is, uh, I've got a few now, haven't I? But this is the first generation. I bought it on a whim. As I said, it didn't cost a lot. I was quite happy to get this for the money I paid. And all in all, I'm pretty pleased with this. It's gonna need some work, but I'll have some extra time, hopefully in the summer, to get some of these vacuums done. Who brings you new turbo power with revolutionary turbo action? Giving you more suction power than ever before in an upright cleaner. Who brings you a cleaner that reactivates the fibers of your carpet? A cleaner that even freshens the air. Who's the power behind turbo power? Hoover. Who better?